There it was another very long, very busy week here at the International Stroke Conference. I've been going to these since uh, 1985. When I first started coming to these, all the stroke experts in the world were housed in one room. We all sat in this one room for the entire day and everything that you could want to know was talked about. Now here at the International Stroke Conference, we had about 5,700 attendees uh, spread out over three days. Most times, aside from the plenaries, there were seven or eight concurrent sessions going on. So it's really hard to um, keep track of all that's going, going on here, but it is the premier conference for stroke in the world. Many uh, major studies were discussed here this week couple that come to mind. Uh, one uh, was the EXTEND IA trial, where um, what was studied were two different doses of tenecteplase, which is a, an alternative for uh, TPA given before patients went on for mechanical thrombectomy for having clot, the clots removed. Turned out that there was no difference between a high and a low dose of that drug. The other thing I learned, which was uh, sort of interesting, was that at least one health system has switched uh, from TPA to tenecteplase. Our national guidelines may have tenecteplase as a 2B recommendation, but it's not FDA approved. This is at least the first time I've heard of an entire health system switching over. Some of the advantages are that it can be given very quickly in a single dose so that there's no infusion, and apparently it was actually cheaper. Um, we'll see whether that gets traction as time goes on. Another important study was one uh, testing a neuroprotective agent given at the time of mechanical thrombectomy. We have studied hundreds of these compounds over decades. None of them has ever proven to be, to be efficacious. The thing that was important about those is we were never really sure that the drug was getting into the area of the stroke that where the, where the brain tissue was injured because that area was closed. So the study that was done was giving a neuroprotective agent um, associated with mechanical thrombectomy. Overall, the effect was again neutral, so you could say this was another negative trial. But one of the interesting things was that um, the folks that got TPA activase before the uh, thrombectomy, they didn't have benefit, but the ones who didn't get it beforehand, they did. So why might that be? Well, one explanation is that the, um, is that the TPA itself eats up this drug. So it actually removed the drug from the circulation. Now, whether that's actually true, um, what we'll need to do is test that in another prospective study in that subgroup. One of the other lessons that we've learned over the years is that when you have a finding in a subgroup of a trial, you have to go on and then test it prospectively. We've had many compounds that seem to be helpful in a subgroup, and then we test it prospectively, and we find that it, that it really doesn't work. I think another important thing is, um, is understanding where we are with stroke overall. Uh, over a period of several decades, we've had a 30 to 40 percent reduction in stroke-related mortality in the United States and similar trends elsewhere. But starting in around 2013, we noticed that that trend was leveling off and actually starting to increase. So in the United States, in three quarters of states, stroke-related mortality has not only continued to decrease, but it's either stabilized or in some areas increased. In the affiliate, particularly in the eastern part of the Appalachia Mountains, eastern part of Kentucky, western West Virginia, going up through Pennsylvania, that's the area within the stroke belt region of the country where there is an even higher risk, higher risk of stroke. And we've seen these same trends in those areas. So we do have a lot of work. But the other data that's now uh, become, that seems to be true is that the trend that we were seeing here in the United States where stroke is increasing, that appears to be have, occurring worldwide. I presented an analysis from the global, uh, the global Burden of Disease database. And what, what I found was that stroke mortality is up, stroke incidence is up, stroke prevalence is up, and the disability adjusted life years associated with stroke is up but worldwide since, the, since 2013. So the, 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 all of the benefits that we thought we were having from population-based approaches from risk factor management seems now to be dissipating. 
whether this is because of increased socioeconomic stress or some other factor, we don't really know. But when you start seeing the same trend, not only here in the United States, but worldwide, we have to really get to the bottom of this because all these great advances that we have, if we, um, if the burden of stroke continues to increase, uh, we're, we're, we're not gonna be able to, to make a dent in it.